Welcome to Larkin Gowan Insights, accountancy and business advice for all. A series that gives you bite-sized tips and guidance on tax, funding, legislation, reforms and much more. With case studies, business advisory and sector specials and even interviews, our team of experts are committed to helping you navigate the world of accounting and finance with a variety of presenters from across our specialisms. So, let's get on with today's show. Today's episode is around succession planning within your business and we are joined by our colleague Martin Bug. Hi Martin, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, Hello, Uh, I'm Martin. I'm a partner in our business team within our Norwich office. Uh, Good to be here. Thanks Martin. So Martin, you deal with a lot of businesses uh, that are looking towards succession planning, aren't they? That kind of higher turnovers where maybe... Uh, they're looking to build the next generation. What would you say a succession plan looks like? Firstly, I think we uh, we should think about what succession actually is in a business. Um, there's there's sort of two strands that a business could look look for for its succession and what they're trying to achieve. Whether it's actually a business owner has a has an exit, or whether actually they're looking for someone just to take on that leadership that ownership of the company, whether whether that's a group of employees or uh, family members actually coming through and taking the business into, into the future. Um, so when, when you're thinking about a succession plan and what a business needs to identify, I think the first thing is, firstly, what their main goal is, whether that's ownership or whether that's exit, and if it is ownership, and we're specifically talking about that in this episode, then um, actually the first thing they need to do is identify those people that are going to take the business into the future, identifying whether they're key employees or key family members that are going to be critical to the success of the business. Those, I suppose it's those people that you can't do without, the ones that you would go, you know, if they were leaving, handed in their notice, you go, wow, what are we going to do now? They are critical to the business. So you know who they are. Put that in the in your thinking of, right, I don't want them to go, right, well, therefore, they are for the future of the business. And then highlight it, uh, you know, within the business. I suppose people might already have that in the back of their minds, won't they? If, they, if they go on holiday, for example, you already know who you're leaving the key actions to while you're away. So peace of mind, it's okay. Bob is going to be looking after that while I'm away. So it's just cementing that, is it? Yeah, I think it is. It's, it's that critical role. The people that are, as you say, doing those things in the background that may be a bit unsung at times, but the ones that you really rely on. Um, I think that that's part of identifying what your your succession plan is. the The second thing I think you you really must do is I you know highlight what your your timelines are for all of this. You know, is it that you know you want to step away from the business tomorrow, in three years' time, in five years' time, in ten years' time? It it still needs to have a plan of where you're going, when you're going, because None of these things happen overnight. They all need thinking, planning, and actually sometimes for you to be open and honest with those employees that you've highlighted um, that actually, you know, this is your direction of travel. Yeah, so we roughly say you might want your 10-year plan, but by five years, we really need to be bringing those people on and them seeing where where they're going as well don't you what what do you think someone looks what is a typical person that might take over you your your duties um what what do you think they look like i you have to uh, ascertain the the employees that have the the skills that you need the experience and and that intangible potential to fill the role that you know whether that's what you're in or what the business leaders within the within the business effectively look like they they've got to they've got to tick all them boxes 
they've got to have them critical skills that go actually you know we can we can learn a couple of the skills that you need to run this business but actually if you don't have the drive the passion and the potential to do it actually they might not be the right successor for your business they 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 don't have that drive to take it into the future and continue along the same path that you've already set that course of business up to do. You're almost looking, Martin, at who the business wouldn't be the same without what key members of staff would make that change to the business. That is effectively what 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 we need within with any any succession plan is your key people. And and I talked a bit uh, earlier about that they. They might not necessarily have to have all the right skills, experience um, to fill the role that you might want them to have in the future. But that's where actually having that five, that 10 year plan, not just for the business, but also actually linking it with the employees development as well, or the key people, whether that's family members, that actually they're developing their own skill set for their future role whether that is you need to make sure that they have a good mentor within your business, whether they have required training of skills that they don't have, or whether actually that means that you bring them under your wing so they shadow you at some points in actually understanding how you make decisions, for example, or how you approach certain scenarios. All of that is really important as part of your plan as well. Um, to make sure that the people are as fit for purpose as um, you've highlighted them to be? No, I've definitely experienced it with a few of our clients where perhaps they're bringing on the next generation if it's a family business and they'll say, actually, I would like to bring my son or daughter to the year-end accounts meeting so they can see what the figures look like, what we discuss, future plans and really bring them into it. Um yeah, so it's just giving them the opportunities, isn't it? Rather than going, right, this is my timeline. And by this date, I'm just going to hand the keys over to you and, mm. and off you go. It's actually bringing them along that journey with you, isn't it? Yeah, and that that that's key. And I think that, you know, there's bringing them along the journey, but actually part of that, part of that bringing along the journey is actually to be open and honest with them and have that conversation to go, actually, look, we see... We see you as being critical for our for our business going forward. We we believe in you. We um, have faith that you are going to develop the right acquired skill sets, lead this business into the future. And actually, having that open and honest conversation is you know is this actually what what you want? Is this is this the direction of travel that you want to take your career? Do you want to? to be the person that leads our business into the future, you know, come along for the journey, um, because it's not necessarily right for everybody. Whilst it, it might feel right at the time and the people might perceive that they want it, actually, when you when you actually scratch scratch the surface a bit, they it, it might not be in their radar and they're quite happy to perform the role they are in, but don't actually want to perform any different role. Um, one of the other things that you mentioned and you talked about there, uh, Megan, was uh, you know family members bringing the younger generation along. Well, family family businesses all face unique challenges when it comes to succession. When there might be multiple children that might be looking to take over the business, actually, who is who is nailed to the mast as being the succession for the business are they all going to step up in a role actually does does one of the family members you know they came along for the ride but it's not where they want to be um and actually they they have their own um challenges when it comes to actually integrating the new generation in and almost stepping back of the the older generation as well um that that will be challenging to do because whilst the new generation may have taken over stepped in the older generation will always be around the dinner table as such <laughs> so uh, we'll all will we'll, yeah. we'll always have their their finger in the pies uh, to to effectively give their advice as guidance which to a certain extent that can be really helpful but also it can uh, it can sometimes be uh, against necessarily what the what the second generation might uh, might have decided 
I think something we see quite often with the family dynamic is the next generation coming through have got bright ideas on things such as digitalizing the business, automating areas. Um, Martin, you're obviously pretty hot on all, everything digital. What what have you seen in your experience? Yeah, do 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 like my tech. Well, I I suppose in my experience, the bringing fresh faces, new ideas, they 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 do bring it to the table and actually are are really proactive in making sure that things are not necessarily always done in the same way they always have been. That they they challenge the norms and are not afraid to change things and actually to to put their own stamp on any business through any succession that that we're talking about that actually it might be important for them to do some of that so whether they're using new technology bringing in new software um whether they're using ai data analytics to look at various different metrics within the business that's that's them bringing their own stamp on it and actually is uh, can take a business um, flourishing into the future. So we've spoken quite a lot about family businesses and succession plans within that. But how do you keep that external stakeholder confidence? I, I think it's key for for any business to be seen as being continuing. So your, your external stakeholders looking in might know that the business owners, for example, are aging and or have got different different priorities in life. So actually for them to see that you've got a plan, you're bringing people in, you're bringing um, people along to the meetings, for example, as we mentioned before, then actually they they can see that you're addressing this, that you know and you've got a plan i think that's really important because if they're going to continue trading with you buying buying you know at at any level from you whether that's services or products they want to see that actually you know this is this is all going going in the right direction i think a lot of the time as well they'll they'll probably be familiar so suppliers or customers if it's in a family business or even if it's not to be honest you'll always be familiar with the other names in the business and if they are a key persons to your business there's quite a high chance that you know of them and it's therefore quite a natural progression yeah and i, I think it is, it's it's that natural progression that you've highlighted this person to to step up and and join in at the around the table around the management table and actually that you know your key stakeholders are are seeing that and actually decisions are coming from them as well it 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 all goes to bed in that confidence that 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 there is a there is a plan going forward it's more natural isn't it because it's, especially if you've got a five year plan for example you can start thinking about what steps do i need to put in now who do i need to introduce to start building that relationship ready yeah, I agree, I agree completely. So with the change in businesses and looking at succession planning, how do you make sure that the culture remains positive? So you've mentioned family businesses and some perhaps expectations that it will be the older sibling, for example. But if there's any disruptions, how how have you seen businesses manage the culture I, I think one of the going back to one of my, my previous points the common challenge when you talk about culture is the resistance from current leaders or employees to accept the succession plan that you've highlighted but that's where I um, I've seen that you know being open and honest communicating the benefits involving the team the wider team all in the process of it brings them into the understanding and that that's almost been critical that they're on board they're not out of the loop they understand the goals and what we're trying to achieve absolutely it's change and there's often a little bit of um, disruption with any change but I think one of the main things to keep in mind is communication and being transparent yeah I did very much so the 
if we're being open and transparent with the employers about it is really important. One of the things we we haven't yet touched on is sometimes actually how to motivate some of them people that, yeah, no, we, we see you as su- the succession of the business. They might not, they might be employees, they might not be the the owners of the shares in the company or or derive anything from the profits of the company. Actually, there are um, parts that you can look at that once, you know, succession plan is going and moving on, it's part of your plan to think, actually, look, how do we how do we keep our key people on board, motivate them to be part of the business going forward? It's, it's challenging when it comes to family. I've seen where it's gone right really well and I've seen where it hasn't gone right really well and I think Ilana you're you're 100% correct is that the most appropriate person might not necessarily be the son or the daughter to take it forward it may be the key managing director that's been the you know the existing owner's right hand person for the last 10-15 years that actually is the most appropriate person in the interim to take it forward doesn't mean that the son and daughter might not get there but actually you're giving them a bit more time a bit more breathing space to develop that skill set to then take it on yeah making others comfortable as well so communicating to the other employees to say what is your progression plan for example to then give them the level of confidence that they can also progress and that there is room for them to progress so what happens if the plan changes <laughs> so you've got your key member of staff who you've been training up but perhaps their priorities or life circumstances change is it super important to keep looking at this succession plan how how often how regular do you think people should be looking at that plan and communicating that with their teams plans change all the while it's just I like an analogy. Let's take it to a football analogy. You you set your team out one way to go and play football against the other one, and then at half time, uh, your your opponents uh, make plenty of substitutions, change their formation. You know, you you need to act on the fly for some of that and change and mould with what you now need to do to beat that other team. You can you can set your plan, but reviewing it regularly, making sure it still is the right plan, is important. You know, we talked about having a having a plan for five and ten years, but actually, you, you need to review it and refresh it. I think a lot of people would would think of an accountant and think that we just look at those financial figures, but actually, the way we work with a lot of our clients is through regular catch ups, talking about the finances, but actually, those bits as well, isn't it? How how are the family getting on? How is did it getting on? Um, do you want to talk a bit more about that, Martin? How we can we can help people with their succession planning? For a lot of our clients, we've been acting for them for many years. We know the the business owners really well, and actually, we can, can sit down and and talk about where the business is going, how it's going to get there. Is there an exit strategy for a director? Whether that is succession like we've talked about in this uh, in this podcast or whether actually that is a complete exit from the business and maybe a sale we've got people within our teams that can talk to talk to all of our clients um on any prospective clients about any of that um and actually give them the, the what what we've seen before what works well what doesn't work so well and actually help them yeah so the financial figures can help people make informed decisions, can't it, around that and, okay, who's performing the best, what things have worked well, um, and just using our knowledge from all different industries, different client types, we can maybe help with a few insights as well. Yeah, we see we see a lot of different industries and we see a lot of different scenarios that actually you see what works really well, you see what maybe hasn't worked so well, and that doesn't mean to say if it hasn't worked so well, that's not necessarily the right answer. But actually, we've seen here are the pitfalls and we're highlighting the pitfalls to you. So you don't make the same mistakes. You don't go down that, that same route that uh, it might not have worked so well um, in the past. Yeah. So the questions such as how do I retain my staff? 
that's probably something we can help with in terms of bonus structures, that type of area as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I talked I talked previously about um, how you incentivize your key people to remain within the business, how you think about if it's family, for example, moving shareholdings down generations. They're all things that we can advise on and actually as you as you mentioned, bonus structures or different types of remuneration. You know, once you've hit a certain level of profit, then it's shared between your key people. Actually we can we can look and and, and talk to you about that to see actually is that is that the right option? Or or is there a transfer of shares? What's the timeline for it? When's it going to hit? Actually, if you do do that, what is the uh, what are the tax implications of doing that? There's plenty of things that that can be laid on the table and plenty of options. But always, as a put a bit of health warning is, is you've always got to speak to your advisor about it to make sure it is right for you in the business at the time. And you've spoken, well, you've mentioned timeline, Martin. How do you know when the right time to have those conversations with your accountant or other professionals? Well, I think if you're, if you're listening to this podcast um, and thinking, I don't necessarily have a plan, but I know my plan starts with I you know, want to exit the business in three, five, ten years' time, then actually now's the right time. There's no reason that you you need to leave it or dwell on it. Actually, getting that plan in place, knowing where it is, it's it's a bit more of that comfort blanket to actually make you sleep sounder at night. That actually, look, we've we've got a plan in place, and now it might change, and it might mould, and things might happen, and people might leave, and people might come, and and it changes and flexes it. But for the here and now, if something happened tomorrow, we know what's going to happen. Absolutely. We've got a few clients that have mentioned that they're they're quite happy day to day running the business, but actually in say five years they're ready to retire. And it just gives us that knowledge of their plans and seeing inside their head what their thoughts are, so that we can then think about that when we're having the year end meetings between now and then to start thinking about how we deal with that transition and how we guide our clients through it. I was meeting with a client uh, a couple of weeks ago and we were we were talking about succession planning and actually the must have been about 10 years ago we put in a succession plan of how the key directors within the business were going to step back from the business we're going to allow and and let the management team as it currently stood at the time to come in and run the business so actually they could they could enjoy their time how they wanted to and the business was still run as a couple of weeks ago the next part of that succession plan we've now put in place family members are now going to get involved at that that sort of higher level Um, actually shadowing each key part of the business is really important for them and understanding how things are operating understanding the finances as well as understanding the sort of decision making and the customers is really important for this business succession and for it to keep keep going and effectively you know almost draining that great information out of the existing business owners heads and making sure it's in a settled team settled people um, that are coming through to go right I can do it. And whilst they'll have their own ideas for for how to take that business into the future, at least they've got the knowledge and the history of the past and how things have been decided in the past. That's all great, great knowledge and experience as well. Absolutely. It's very rewarding as well, isn't it? When we see our um, clients and their employees working their way up and being promoted, it's quite nice to see, isn't it? One of my other clients have, have recently gone through the second generation taking a step back, the third generation coming in. And actually, you know, it's really refreshing to see the third generation wanting to step up, wanting to drive the business going forward, having really ambitious plans for the business. It's taking that drive function of the business into the into the future. And actually where where I found it very rewarding for me as an accountant is actually to be there on that journey with them and actually helping them along the way. And whilst they not necessarily have all the, I think they they highlight, they might not necessarily have all the skills they need, but actually being that trusted advisor to them that when they go, you might not know the answer either, but what's your thoughts on it as well, actually makes it really rewarding for me too. 
Yeah, we have quite a lot of clients that will say, oh, when I retire, I want to go and do this and I want to do that. And ultimately what they want to do is just have a year out, sun it up on the Mediterranean. That is a little bit sweeter, that cocktail, when you know that you've left your business and it's all gone smoothly and you trust the people that are now running it. Definitely, just like anything, it's that peace of mind that when you've left to go on that holiday, you've locked the house and you know the security alarm's on exactly the same so in a previous episode we've spoken quite a lot around growth and the use of digital products to look at forecasting so martin how can we use the digital products for succession planning as well digital tools give a great insight into the finances of the business and you know i've got my own podcast series where i talk about various different parts of technology and how businesses can embrace that technology But I think one of the things it will do is give you that insight into that financial, that KPI part of the business. Anybody coming through in any succession measure won't necessarily have that oversight, that insight too. And actually that will be able to give them that insight. You know, if the business is not able to provide that insight to them, talking about what technology needs to be implemented into a business as part of that succession plan to make sure that... Any business and any future business owner can use AI data analytics and understand the the key numbers within a business. So great business decisions can be made is really important. And it's something that we talk to businesses about all the while. Yeah. Sit down with clients, look through their KPIs. Have they met them? How are they going to meet them? And ultimately, who are those people within that business that are going to help them meet them? And being, again, like you said, transparent making sure those objectives and timelines are clear, we can really use the tools that we've got available to us to help those conversations. I think that sums it up perfectly. Yeah. So using not just your accountant, but there might be some other people within your network that you might need to use, such as maybe some IFAs or solicitors. Yeah, I think I think with it with any succession plan, you know, we we as accountants can provide help with that plan, help with identifying those individuals. But, you know, there are other professionals, you know, any business should always check in with whether that's a a, a legal from an employment contract or actually putting something down legally on paper in respect of a bonus scheme or in respect of actually, look, this is what's going to happen and this is what we're going to commit to, or whether there's other HR professionals that actually needs to be touched on as well. Yeah, so we can probably help people with that, those recommendations, those referrals as well, can't we? If they don't have those in place been through this with other clients we can see what's worked for them the right kind of person to work with as well um and and make it a bit of a a collaboration with your whole network we've definitely got all them contacts that a business would need um and we can make them as introductions where necessary also when you're looking at things like i know we touched on earlier employee retention there's some services that um, people might not even know are out there such as employee benefits and looking at packages within that which also help yeah very much so so martin just to wrap up now because you've given us lots of different advice and i am going to put you on the spot now what would be your top three tips to anyone that is starting to think about how they're going to identify and start to make that move for their business? Yeah, so I think firstly, the top tip is actually sitting down and understanding what your retirement plan is. Um, how, you know, when's it going to be? Five years, 10 years time? Got to understand that first before you can put together any succession plan. Two is identify the key individuals within the business, whether that is family, whether that's key employees, um, and actually have a plan for them to achieve uh, the succession of the business. And my third tip is to make sure you talk to your advisors along the way. It's, It's key to get that insight, that input, and that sort of objective reasoning as to actually what your plan looks like. Thank you, Martin, for joining us today. We've obviously spoken about quite a lot. If anybody would like to get into contact, our details are within the show notes. And Martin, a link to your previous podcast series is also in the show notes, isn't it? 
It is, yes. How you can supercharge your business, talking about all things digital tech. Thank you, Martin, for joining us today. Cheers. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us for Larkin Gowan Insights, Accountancy and Business Advice for All. Don't forget, you can find more information about today's topic and more about how our team of experts can help you in your business by visiting our website, larking-gowan.co.uk. Join us again next time for another fascinating insight into the world of accounting and finance.